I'm Dr. Erin Smith, and I'm an astrophysicist at NASA. I usually work at NASA Ames, which is in the Bay Area, but right now I'm down in Palmdale in Southern California at the Dryden Aircraft Operations Facility because the project that I work on flies out there. I work on a project called SOFIA, which stands for the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, which is just a really fancy way of saying we took 747 and put a telescope in the back end. It's a pretty cool project, so let's check it out. Sophia is just a normal 747 with a hole cut into the back and a telescope inside of that hole. There's a garage door that covers it most of the time, and that garage door can open during flight to reveal the telescope. So there's a couple of reasons we'd want to put a telescope in an airplane other than it's just kind of cool. The first is that it gets us above the water vapor. Now water vapor is just water in gas form, but water vapor blocks infrared light, which is light just red of what our eyes can see. Think of it sort of like heat vision. And with this infrared light, we can look at things like star formation, stuff that's blocked on the ground, but we can see if we're in the stratosphere where airplanes fly. Now, the other big advantage of SOFIA is that because it lands every day, we have access to it. Whereas if we were to put something into space, we'd never get to tinker with the equipment or update it. So that's the real advantage of SOFIA. The other cool thing is that the front half of the airplane is completely like any other 747. You don't need masks or anything. So in that front half is where we put the cameras that, that actually take the pictures. Right now we're walking up to the side of the aircraft. And as you can see, Sophia is really just a normal 747 from the front. But if you pan around, you can see what looks to be ridges on the back end. This is the back end of the door to the, to the telescope. You can also see that there are two flags on the side of Sophia, and that's because it's a joint operation between the United States and Germany. Going inside of the aircraft, you can see that the 747 has two levels. Up here is the first class cabin, and this is where the scientists sit during takeoff and, take and landing. These are some control electronics for the telescope. And here's a stairway, which leads up to the cockpit and to the flight electronics. So let's check that out. Here's where the flight engineers sit. And they monitor things like altitude, airspeed, and water vapor and relay it to the teams below and to the pilots. And up here is where the pilots are. This 747 dates back from the 1970s, and so you might notice that there are dials and gauges and bun buttons that you wouldn't see on a modern aircraft. There's the pilot station, the co-pilot station, and then the navigator station. Navigation is really important for Sophia because in order to point at the correct stars, we have to know exactly where the plane is and exactly where the telescope is pointing. This means that we have to keep track of the correct tracks for the plane to fly on. So here's the door that instruments or cameras would actually come in on. They move down the track here. past where the mission operator is. This is the person that keeps track of what's going on in the telescope at any given time. Down to the telescope. So this is the back end of the telescope. This thing here is this big pressure gauge. So when the door opens, this part where we are right now actually stays at the same pressure as you would find on a normal 747. The big thing that's up in the air is where all the electronics would be held for the camera, and the big silver thing would be replaced by the camera itself. So the camera attaches to the flange here and can rotate, uh, can rotate around along with the telescope. If we move back here, we don't have a, teles we don't have a camera in installed, so we don't have any of the additional electronics that would sit here. And over here is the TA operator station. This is where the telescope is controlled from. This is also where we choose our targets and start guiding. Guiding lets us keep the telescope on track, pointing at the same object throughout the exposures. If you think about it like a normal camera, 
when you hear the shutter click, that's the light coming into the camera. And the, when the shutter clicks close, the light is going off the camera. For astronomy, we want to be able to control that shutter click so we can get as much light onto the telescope as we can, as much light onto the camera as we can. So I hope you guys enjoyed our quick tour of Sophia. I'll be visiting you in the classroom pretty soon. I can't wait to meet y'all. Bye.